Yes. With a population of 1.1 million, Cologne is Germany's Whoa. fourth biggest city. Your fourth biggest city is over a million. What's up, guys? It's Dwayne back again for another video. Back in for the reaction. And today's a great, incredible, beautiful, amazing, incredible. I said incredible twice. Day. Because it's a Germany day. Germany's top five cities explained. Without further ado, let's get into this reaction, let's go. We are Deanna and Phil. Deanna's from the United States and I'm from Germany. And in today's video, we're gonna talk Hello. about the big five German cities according to population and explain what you can expect from each city, give you a feeling for it, and also how similar and different each of these cities are. And the first city is gonna be Frankfurt am Main. Fra Frankfurt am Main. I, uh, I've heard of Frankfurt. Honestly, guys, I don't, I don't know much about Germany. I'm, I don't know much about Frankfurt. I'm excited for this video because I'm going to be learning about each city now. So each major city, so. Frankfurt's population is about 760,000 people and it's located pretty okay. centrally in Germany in the state of Hessen. 760,000 people is the size of the city that I'm from in England. Um, it's called Leeds. You can Google it if you want to. Leeds is in Yorkshire. Uh, in the United Kingdom and it's around that population size so it's probably like a sister city to Frankfurt um, so it's um, like a, a a large city I don't know if this is I don't know if Frankfurt on mine mine is classed as a large city in Germany let me know in the comment section <gasps> financial center it is a huge european hub for transportation tourism and commerce it is also huge in the service industry Fun this train station looks like leads as well in fact there's a research network that kind of ranks cities around the world according to economic importance and frankfurt is the only alpha ranked city next to cities like la mumbai sao paulo or sydney so all of the other cities on this list are kind of beta Oh. The Frankfurt airport is by far the biggest in Germany and it is one of the busiest airports in the world since it's centrally located in Europe. You've okay. also probably had a layover there if you've ever traveled across Europe or if you're coming to Germany, maybe that's where you're landing. Frankfurt also has Germany's only attempt at an actual skyline with all these fancy banks building these high-rise buildings. Right. I love skyscrapers and I was always very proud of Frankfurt's skyline that was until we flew into New York City in 2019 <laughs> and my picture of a German skyline was absolutely shattered. Shattered. <laughs> it's true. When you go to like big cities, like you think that your big city's got big skyscrapers. Now London's pretty impressive when it comes to its skyline, but it's nothing like, I mean, I haven't been to New York, but I've been to a lot of Asian countries and they know how to do skyscrapers. Like Hong Kong's skyline is it's beautiful. Um, Bangkok's got quite a good skyline. Where else is there? Probably other Asian countries that I haven't been to, like probably Tokyo, the different areas. And I know, especially in the Middle East, whoa. Let's not go into that because their skyscrapers are insane. Frankfurter sausages. You might have heard of them, and this is where they got their name from. Frankfurt. One of the things that Frankfurt has going for it is its location on the River Main. It's always nice if a city is featuring some water. The river is pretty big at this area, and it's a really nice escape to do some recreational activities to escape that busy city life. Frankfurt. Nice. I like I like cities that have big rivers in the middle. Pace is fast, and the vibe can be hectic, at least until the workday ends. It's a career city. If you are fresh out of college okay. and you're willing to work, work, work your ass off for the next five to 10 years and bow down to the corporate system, Frankfurt is the place to be. Frankfurt is one of the most international cities and it is the most international on this list due to its global service industries. It is let me know in the comment section if you live in Frankfurt. Um, yeah, let me know. And let me know if it is like a very busy financially, financially? Finance City. Let me know if you work in Frankfurt as well. I would like to know. I'd like to know what you guys do. Let me know in the comment section what you guys do for work. It is Germany's economic powerhouse. Number two is Cologne. Or Cologne, Cologne. in Germany. Yeah. Heard of that name a lot. Couldn't tell you what Cologne's like, so this is exciting. Yes. With a population of 1.1 million, Cologne is Germany's Whoa. fourth biggest city. And a your fourth biggest city is over a million. Jeez. <laughs> We've only got two cities. 
possibly three that are over a million. That's London, obviously, it's a stupid population, maybe eight million people live in London or something like that. Then you have Birmingham, which is like probably 1.4 or 1.5 million people live there. And then um, possibly Manchester might have reached a million. And we have a few other cities like my city of Leeds that are approaching that mark and will eventually hit a million. But you guys already have four cities that are over a million. That's insane. Maybe more. She said that's the fourth one, but I don't know if you've got any more than that. Wow. And it is located in Germany's far left, uh, sorry, far west in the state far of west. North Rhine-Westphalia. I often jokingly call Cologne the LA of Germany because oh. a lot of the TV channels and entertainment industry are located in Cologne. So okay. before YouTube, a lot of the shows that we watched on TV growing up as a kid were probably produced somewhere in Cologne. Cologne is open. Cologne is tolerant. Cologne is pretty liberal. At least mm. that's what my perception of that city is. Oh my God, it looks like England. Jeez. It has a pretty diverse population and it doesn't feel as pretentious as other cities on this list might. Yeah, there was an outdated running gag in Germany that everyone in Cologne is gay. I guess that reputation must have come from the less discriminative culture of the city in the past. Cologne has a great location on the River Rhine and it's also not too far from a lot of other great German cities. You also have nearby countries like the Netherlands and Belgium. Amsterdam uh, is only 2.5 hours away and Brussels is only two hours away by car. Right. It's a major cultural center in the Rhineland with a lot of museums and galleries. If you it looks like a standard UK city. It looks very similar to that. And what a great place to live if it's so tolerant of people, of all sexualities, all creeds, all colors and great appro um, approximate location to like Amsterdam and the Netherlands, so cool. And then like, obviously not very far from the West, right? It's from the UK, so, hmm. If you happen to love churches, oh boy, are you in for a treat. The Cologne Cathedral is one of Germany's best known landmarks and the most visited one. The Gothic okay. architecture is amazing wow. and it is basically the largest church in the world. There are two slightly higher oh ones. Oh my gosh. It's like a skyscraper of a church. Ones, but they don't even have twin towers, so. Psh. Everything about its architecture is impressive oh and it's definitely worth a visit. How did they do that? Don't you, I don't know about you guys, but I get, when I look at like the architecture and how they're built and I'm thinking, we don't even build things like that today. Like how did they do this? back in that time when they didn't have, you know, cranes and equipment to build. Like, it's very confusing to me. I'm like, how did they do that? <laughs> and I don't think there's any information or plans or like, there's no, I don't know if there's information out there on how they did it so they can recreate that in the way that they did it. I don't know. Okay, I digress, but it's, it's insane. There's just a good mix of people in the city and the general vibe was pretty much down to earth. If you like to eat, like us, there are some fun local dishes to try. The most important is Himmel und Ad, a dish that is made of fried blood oh. sausage, roasted onions and mashed apples. Interesting. Fried blood sausage, that's kind of like our black pudding. We have black pudding that's like fried blood sausage and she said apple mash on it looks nice i bet it's nice you can check that out in our cologne videos all right the third city on our list is munich munich again a city that i've heard a lot a lot about i have positive connotations towards that city i don't know anything about the city though so this is gonna be fun or München in German. München. And with a population of about wow. 1.5 million people, it's Germany's wow. third biggest city. And of course, it's located deep in Bavaria in Germany's southeast. Love it or hate it, Munich is very beautiful and has a very high quality of life if you can afford it. One thing oh, that expensive. Munich has going for itself for a city of that size, it has a pretty relaxed vibe. They call it the biggest village in the world. Wow. Oh. <laughs> this is home to the world famous car manufacturer BMW, which wow. is why you will see more BMWs on the street than anywhere else in the world. 
as well as Germany's most successful football club, the FC Bayern München. The city loves their cars and football. The Bavarians are proud of it's a good football team. these things and their city, and they're not really trying to hide that. They also have a little bit more of an accent than the other cities on this list, so if you're a non-native really? speaker visiting Munich, it could be a little bit harder to understand the people. Also, Munich might be the most conservative city on this list, so they're just a little uh, bit slower and more hesitant to adapt new things. Ah, it's a conservative city. Okay. Due to Munich's wealth and great job market, with one of the lowest unemployment rates, it is a prime destination for young professionals who are not trying to die of overwork like in Frankfurt. However, it is notoriously hard to get into local friend groups as somebody who is not from the city. You will always be a transplant. Oh, and of course, then there's beer. Munich is beer. And brezel. And then there's also the Oktoberfest. Yeah, I lived in Munich and I've been twice to the Oktoberfest. The first couple of hours were kind of fun, but then it turned into some of my worst experiences. But hey, Why? I'm sure there are some people who are thoroughly enjoying it. It is just absolutely gluttonous binge drinking at its <laughs> finest. I want to go there. Just <laughs> so do I. <laughs> I'll definitely try it out. It sounds like fun to me. Just go on YouTube and look for Oktoberfest fails. Plenty of piss drunk guys and girls in their thousands of dollars designer lederhosen falling down the hills, balls out, covered in vomit. Oktoberfest. Oh. Sounds like a fun time. But overall, Munich is great. It's just not for everyone. It has by far the highest rental prices in Germany, right. but it also has the highest rate of millionaires. Right. No. The best thing, in my opinion, is the nature surrounding Munich. It just takes 45 minutes driving to wow. the south and you're at the foothills of the Alps. Skiing, hiking, downhill mountain biking, all in reach. That's probably why it's expensive, right? If it's so close to the Alps and the Alps is like a tourist destination of Germany, like a, that's where a lot of people go to, right? To experience the wonders of Germany and the mountains and the hills and the beauty. So obviously all the tourism is going to go there and then the nearest town is Munich or nearest city is Munich. Uh, so people are going to be like, oh, let's how about we go and stay there and spend money. Makes sense. The entire south and the southeast outside of Germany. Do you know what that looks like? Absolutely stunning, incredible and almost doesn't look real. That almost doesn't look real. Um, but it looks like the hills are alive with the sound of music. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Was it filmed in the Alps? That scene? I know it's not, it's Austria, right? That's the, that's where it, that's where it was filmed. Um, that's where it's based or set. But was it actually filmed here? Let me know if you guys know in the comment section below. Germany is, in my opinion, the absolutely finest landscape, scenery, and nature wow. that Germany has to offer. I want to go. Even the Thai king lives there. The king of Thailand. Sir is that where he lives? Wow. The king of Thailand lives there. Wow. Because I know he's not. He's currently not in Thailand. And that's a, another story for another day. The reason why he's not in Thailand is another story for another day. <laughs> City number four on our list is Hamburg. 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 Another city that we hear about a lot in England. Again, I am really uh, ashamed that I can't tell you, apart from, I think hamburgers are, are, are named after Hamburg. I couldn't tell you anything about Hamburg at all. With a population of about 1.8 million, it's Germany's wow. second biggest city and it's located all the way up in the north. It is known as Germany's gateway to the world because of its historic harbor that leads to the northern sea and then to the Atlantic Ocean. This harbor is the biggest in Germany and the third biggest in Europe and it's basically the face of the city. Hamburg's okay. theme is water. There is water everywhere. At times wow. it feels a little bit like Venice. It is a true harbor city, however, it is not actually located at the coast, but about 100 kilometers inland. The Elbe River okay. widens up immensely in Hamburg and forms this huge open water path for the remaining way to the ocean, which makes the port and intense sea traffic possible. 
Since the city was mostly flattened during the war, there is a very unique mixture of architecture. There are a lot of new modern style buildings wow. and also a lot of older restoration buildings. The city itself has no skyscrapers and Hamburg has more bridges inside the city limits than any other city in the world, which is something I absolutely wow. love. I love when the city has a lot of water flowing through it. I really like a lot of the red brick style buildings in the Hafen city and the Speicherstadt. It's a nice contrast to a lot of other cities that we've been to in Germany. Very interesting looking city, yeah, that's very, the character, just looking at this city and looking at all the waterways and, you know, it looks different from all the other German cities. I'm so excited to go to Germany. You guys have so, every city so far has been so different. That's awesome. In England, a lot of our cities are very, very similar, but this, I need to check out Hamburg. Hamburg is also windy and it can be grey at times. The people in the north also have this reputation of being more straightforward and maybe a little bit less polite and friendly than their southern counterparts. However, okay. that is absolutely not what we have experienced. Hamburg was probably the place where people were the most friendly and polite towards us, but maybe let us know what you think about that topic. Like mm. any other good harbour town, it is known for its delicious seafood. Oh yeah. There are a lot of seafood restaurants everywhere and one of the best things is to just stroll down the port and try it all out. You'll see the classic fish brochin everywhere. Wow, that's a big piece of fish. Yummy. Recommend trying the Labskaus if you dare. We made a whole video trying different- Do you know what? Sorry, this is, this is very like off topic. Well, not off topic, it's on topic, it's about fish. But I don't eat enough fish. Um, I, when I was younger, I used to eat fish all the time. I'm from Britain, we're an island, we eat a lot of fish, fish and chips on Friday, that's what we do, but I haven't had, I couldn't tell you the last time I had a piece of fish, and I think it's because of, you know, like the whole fish have mercury inside, there's a lot of heavy metals inside fish, and I think that's put me off from eating fish, but fish is like such an important part of our diets, I'm probably missing a lot of omegas. <laughs> It's uh, omega-3 fatty acids, right? Sorry, that's, that's so off topic, but I just, it just came to my mind. I was like, oh, I like fish. And then I was like, Dwayne, when, when was the last time you had a piece of fish? <laughs> Thinking out loud, because you guys really wanted to know about my lack of fish in my diet. Now you know. Different foods in Hamburg, Sorry. so you should check it out. That was good. Overall, if you like to be on the water and you don't mind a little bit of a rougher, windier weather, then Hamburg right. is for you. Plenty to discover, great people, great food, and on a summer day, it might be Germany's most beautiful city. Oh, It looks rough around the edge. I quite like the look of Hamburg. I love water and I love looking out at water um, from England, from an island. And I just love, it just looks quite, rough and rustic maybe because like he said it was leveled by the war like it got hit pretty badly during the war and it's quite low rise and i like low rise um cities so oh and also the Ripperbahn. all right last but not oh and it reminds me of Le where i'm from leeds because we don't have any we don't have many tall buildings in my city so not least number five the largest city in germany and the capital of course it's berlin berlin, berlin. with now berlin i know the most about which makes sense because it's your capital city and yeah i just heard a lot about berlin everything from your kinky side i don't know much about that but i'm going to explore um but there's a there's a rumor that that's what i don't know if it's a stereotype i'm not sure i don't know really, i don't know much but i know that berlin has like a little bit of a underground scene but then of the berlin berlin wall um are you guys famous for i could be no no don't matter i was gonna say something i was like nah you're not famous for that maybe i don't know enough about berlin let's let's watch with a population of about 3.7 million, Berlin is Damn. twice the size of Hamburg and by far the biggest city in Germany. In but it's weird, you've got so many cities that are over a million, more than the UK. You have more cities with a high population. However, your capital city still has like half the amount of people than, than our capital city. It's like in England, like every, it's, everything is concentrated in London. 
Like uh, London at this point, <laughs> with its population, could be its own bloody country. Doesn't make any sense. It is located in the northeast, and it's only about an hour drive away from the Polish border. Much of ah. Berlin was destroyed during the war, and a lot of the buildings that remained were demolished in the 50s and 60s. Wow, One of the landmarks, the television tower at Alexanderplatz, is Germany's tallest structure at 368 meters. It was built in 1969. It's a pretty iconic building since it sticks out of the skyline, and you'll find the television tower on a lot of souvenirs, magnets, and postcards. Berlin has so many historic landmarks wow. and museums around the city. Oh, wow. That's a beautiful building. Jeez. Amazing that it withstood the, the war. The Brandenburg Gate is probably the best known around Germany, and it's such an iconic building. There are wow. so many major museums, churches, walls, and buildings. Not to forget many rivers and waterways that, in my opinion, helps to enhance the aesthetic of any city. Berlin is a world city of culture and politics. But more than anything, Berlin is history. After World War II and during the Cold War, Berlin was infamously split by the Berlin Wall into East and West Berlin. Remainings of that very wall can still be visited today. It's called the East Side Gallery and it's used as a street art gallery nowadays. <laughs> If you love history, you could spend days, weeks, or even months going to all the different sites. Berlin is also home to at least 180,000 Turkish and Turkish-German residents, making wow. it the largest Turkish community outside of Turkey. And that is probably why Berlin has wow. some of the best döners we've ever eaten and we- Döners, is that how you say it? Döners. We say Donner. Um, Donner's really big in the UK as well. We have a... Relatively average size amount of average sized amount. <laughs> we have a low, a low, um, a low population. Is that the right word? I'm kind of speak today. We have a small amount of Turkish people in our country. There we go. <laughs> get there, man. You know, you get a brain fart or brain fog when you just can't get your words out. Well, Donna kebabs are really, really, really popular in the UK, but. I've heard your Donner kebabs are elite. They're even better than ours, so I need to try when I come to Germany. We've eaten Döner kebabs in every city we visited. It is the best fast food wow. in the world, and Berlin has the best ones. Speaking of food, Berlin is also famous for Currywurst. It's a popular fast food dish with fried pork sausage, served with curry ketchup, curry powder, and other spices. It's usually served with fries or a pommes. Also, the Berlin donut is very popular as well. The Berlin Donut? That looks delicious. Well, but in Berlin, it's known as a Fankuchen. It's also oh. Phil's favorite type of donut. A Berliner. It looks like it's a donut, but it's got icing all over the, all, all on the outside. And jam in the, mid in the middle. I need to try it. A Berliner. Berlin is home to a lot of other international restaurants as well, since it is a multicultural metropolis. Berlin has quite the reputation in Germany, and even within Berlin, there are different reputations for different areas. A lot of Germans like to say Berlin is not really Germany, which just means it's not for everyone, but that's fine because we're all different. Berlin can- It's funny because uh, we say that about London. It's the same. Two capital cities, we say that about London, and we say London, uh, if, if someone said to me, oh, I came to, I came to, I, um, I say if I met someone in Germany and they're like, oh, I've been to, I've been to England. I'd be like, oh yeah, where did you go? And if they said, oh, I went, I went to London. I'd be like, did you really go to England then? I said, did you, <laughs> I'd be like, have you, did you go anywhere else? No, no, I just went to London. It's like, London's not England. Even though it is England, but it's just very international. You have people from everywhere. And yes, it has some of the most historical British sites. However, it's just not like the rest of the country. If you go to the rest of the country, you're like, oh, it's quite different from London. And that's the real England to me. I'm biased though. Berlin can be polished and pretentious, it can be dirty and poor. It is very oh. alternative and attracts all kinds of crazy people, the good kind as well as the bad kind. It is colorful, multicultural, diverse, crazy, electronical, loud, 
political, historical, and much more. Berlin has many faces awesome. and a spot for everyone. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I've learned a lot about the top five cities in Germany. And you know what? I'm so excited to go to each and every single one of them. They're so different. Like, I, that's awesome that all your cities have their own characters. Um, where am I most like? I'm not going to say which one's my favorite or I'm most excited to go to, but from watching the video, you could probably tell which ones I, I really enjoyed learning about. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Until the next one, I'll see you very soon.